Hey everyone, welcome back to One Room Over Gaming. Alright, so uh, I'm picking Crimson Grey back up, and uh, last time I played this, it, we went on a, me and Lizzie went on a little bit of a, went on a little bit of a picnic, and uh, it was surprisingly nice, and, uh, and then I tried to get Lizzie to go see my, my dog is making noise I'm sorry if you can hear that um I tried to go get Lizzie to see Dr. Smythe and then uh, Lizzie was not having it and did not like that idea so I decided that I was gonna have to try and get her to see a male koi tech pharmaceutical rep I don't know why I wanted to see a pharmaceutical rep and not a therapist but you know maybe in this uh in this world they're interchangeable but for now we gotta figure out what's coming next so yeah Lizzie wants needs help and John wants to help her just doesn't know how and so here we go the best way was probably to ask for advice either from Miss Smythe or a pharmacist he could try to research some himself though he doubted he'd be any good at it and he supposed it wouldn't hurt to ask her if she was taking anything else or had allergies or something damn it he should have done that earlier now it was too late to oh she's back John realized that she was still following him. He shouldn't have been surprised. Okay, so asking her was still an option. Absolutely. But he only had so much time before he had to get home and do his schoolwork. So he needed to choose carefully. Oh, good. So I get to choose this. Uh, I like just talk to Miss Smythe, talk to pharmacists, research in the library, talk to Lizzie, or the alternative last option of just, just fuck it, just go home, and, you know, forget about everything. That seems like the easy way out, but I feel like it would have bad consequences. Um, jeez, I don't know, man. If she's, if Lizzie's following me, then if she sees me go talk to Miss Smythe, she might not be happy about it she might panic a little bit because she obviously didn't react well to her last time but I don't know why I'd want to talk to a pharmacist they can't really answer like they answer medicine questions they can tell you what your cough syrup's gonna interfere with um research in the library talk to Lizzie oh man I this might come back to bite me in the ass but we're gonna talk to my psychiatrist she just seems like somebody that that just seems like the best most viable option John headed back to school and discovered that Miss Smythe was still in her office. She always put in long hours. For a moment, he saw her at her desk before she had seen him. She looked older, more tired, just staring at papers in front of her as she worked through them. When she spotted them, though, she immediately flashed a smile. Hello, John. Did you forget something? No, I was wondering if you could help me with something. I know a person who seems to need some medical help, but... It would be easiest if they came to see me. Well, don't think I'm not trying. Uh, I'm afraid one of the issues is paranoia, I guess. I don't think they'd be willing to do that. But I'd like to help. Miss Smythe. Well, it's dangerous to diagnose someone indirectly. But if you describe them, I can at least give you some basic advice. John described Lizzie's worrying behavior as best he could without identifying her. He wasn't sure why he was so careful. Maybe because she might come after him with a knife if he said too much. Or maybe you just genuinely care about her and want her to get better. But you don't want to get her caught up in something she's not ready to be in. When he finished, Miss Smythe nodded thoughtfully. It does sound like a serious case. You'd want to get a blood test done in case there's a serious chemical imbalance. John, do you think there are any drugs that could help? Koytek has a line of very powerful new drugs that could certainly help, but the question is which one would be appropriate? I get a sense that there's a fixation to it. I wish they'd finish developing a rosepam but I guess it's too early for that. No, I'd suggest one of two choices. Nilazine or Yandequel. Those both sound just like a party. I've never heard of either of those before. They wouldn't be at all appropriate for treating your condition, or most conditions, honestly. They're very experimental. Yandequel is a sedative and antipsychotic, while Nilazine promotes focused and clearer thinking. Hmm, I'm just not sure which one would be right. Well, that's why you don't guess and just take crap. A decision like that should really be made by a medical professional. Are you sure I can't help them directly? No, it will be fine. Thanks, Miss Smythe. That was actually really good advice, to be perfectly honest. 
Uh, stepping out on the street, John glanced at his watch and decided he had some more time to research his options. Okay, so now I probably will go talk to Lizzie. Oh, I don't know if she might have seen me. Ah, uh, man. Oh, man, I just don't know what to do in this situation. God. Okay, I mean, I'm going back and forth between talk to Lizzie or talk to pharmacist. But I just, if Lizzie's following me, then this must look like just shady as hell. And I mean, I know that I'm trying to help, but does Lizzie know that I'm trying to help is the question. I, oh, man. You know, I'm going to do the thing I'd never do. Research in library. Stopping by the library, John did his best to research possible, possible medications among the books, even asking the librarians for help. It felt really ineffectual. He wished there was a better way to get information, but there weren't a lot of options. In one of his classes, they'd claim computers would eventually make things easier, but their school couldn't afford any. Oh man, that sucks. One of the few things he could do was skim through various books about mental illness for references to symptoms like Lizzie's. Her case sounded much worse than anything he'd read about. All the articles suggested that most mentally ill people were nonviolent, but he knew that wasn't true of Lizzie. Though there wasn't a lot of current information about Koitech, he did find some. There were crackpots who felt their medicine was ineffective. Even Paxitine had critics who felt it was being rushed to market. John forced himself to stop reading about that since it just made him feel worse. Instead, he focused on selecting potential drugs for Lizzie. All the sources seemed to agree with what he'd already heard. The strongest drugs Koitech made for conditions like this were Yandaquil and Nilazine. It was getting late, and John realized he needed to get home quickly if he wanted to have time for his homework. On his way back, he was sure that Lizzie was following him, but couldn't get a clear look at her. At least it was only one more day until the weekend. Friday passed faster than John had expected. Lizzie was nearby at all times, and they ate lunch together, but things were almost normal. Almost. Just when he started to get comfortable, she would give a giggle that went on a little too long, or slide a hand toward where she hit her knife, or respond far more enthusiastically than she should. Was it bad of him to think that she was really cute despite all that? She could be nice if she wasn't so... well... See, there that is again. I was actually going to talk about that last time, and I didn't bring it up, but um, I don't, I don't like that phrasing right here if she could be nice if she wasn't so well okay so this is a thing that i don't like uh, about people who they just like judge people with mental illnesses because that's all this is this is it, it lizzie seems like a like villainous from our perspective from you know from john's perspective um or from yours and mine's perspective depending because we're watching this but you have to like if you just take a second to put yourself in Lizzie's shoes like you really don't know what's going on with her and we've gotten just a smidge of information about her life it's obviously her parents aren't in the picture and she's got you know a really bad home life and just not well adjusted and uh, you know combine that with mental illness and it just it, it it's not she's not a villain she's not a bad person she's not a bad evil force it's not like she's following John around stalking him you know like going all fatal attraction here she's not she's not like that to her it makes sense you know and it that's just how mental illness is it's not like it doesn't turn you into a psycho it's that's not what it is about it's just an illness just like any illness just like a cough just like the flu i mean your brain is still an organ it's a it's a very powerful organ when you think about it i mean do you think about breathing I don't, I don't, it just does it for you, and sometimes it can mess with chemicals, and that's all mental illness is, it's just fucking logical, but it, I've, from this perspective, it doesn't look logical, but it's not, I don't like this sentence here, getting back to it, I don't like this sentence, because she, she is nice, it's in her, she's got a caring about her, she cares, it's just not coming out healthily, and that's what's important here, so we're gonna try, I'm trying to make the best decisions for John to help Lizzie get herself back to a place that's a little more healthy. So, and no, it's not bad to think she's cute. I mean, she's attractive, artistically designed to be pleasing to our eyes. So yes, it's she is just fine. She just needs help. So let's see if we can get her some. Rant over. But John hated it when his friends suggested he could be fun if he wasn't depressed, and that thought left an ugly knot in his stomach. Imagine how it feels. 
You know, if you don't like it, she doesn't like it. Well, it wasn't long now. Maybe she could get some real help. He made it through his last class, almost slept through his session with Miss Smythe, then headed home. John finished his homework and chores as fast as he could and went to sleep. Going out in public always drained him, and he wanted to have enough energy for the weekend. And John's got to take care of himself, too. I mean, it's, you know, we still got to focus. He, he's got he's got depression, and, you know, that it's, it's not a fucking joke. It's a real thing. He woke up too early, eyes gritty, and head still mired in half-remembered dreams. John got up to get a drink and happened to glance out the window. Lizzie was standing outside his house with a huge smile on her face. After staring at her for a moment, John groaned and went back to bed. I don't know if I could go back to sleep. I, it doesn't matter who, if someone I knew was staring at me through a window, I'd be like, Do you want to come in? Something. The second time he woke up, the sun had already risen. He felt a little better, but not much. Normally he would stay home all weekend, but he couldn't do that if he wanted to help Lizzie. She was still standing outside his house, in exactly the same place, with exactly the same cheerful expression. John brushed his teeth, got dressed, combed his hair. He realized that he was acting like he was getting ready for a date. True, he had sort of accepted her confession. John decided that it was just what he'd have to deal with now if he wanted to have a connection with her. Well, at least he was going to go out with a cute girl. He hadn't done that since middle school, and those were childish relationships. Of course, this was the only way he'd get a date. Pathetic. And there that is again, and you shouldn't think like that. It's, it's just not true. Finishing his preparations, John headed outside. He hadn't noticed from his house, but Lizzie had gotten dressed up for the occasion. He'd never seen her outside her school uniform, and it made him hesitate for a moment. She'd obviously put effort into making herself look good, and she did. It would have been nice if not for how it made him worry about the level of importance she was attaching to the day. Oh, she might have just not wanted to wear a school uniform. It might not... She doesn't look like she's going to the ballet. As soon as Lizzie saw him, her smile became even brighter than it had been while waiting. John, I'm ready. Good morning, Lizzie. Did you sleep all right? Oh, I didn't sleep! Let's go! She practically dragged him down the street, apparently heading for the bus station, yet instead of looking forward, her gaze was fixed behind her on him. Do you have a plan, John? This is our first date. It needs to be perfect. Uh... Shit! He should have known she'd treat it this way. It wasn't like he hadn't had enough time. He used to be good at planning. What was wrong with him? Eh, just stress. Other than clinical depression. You really haven't had time to plan out a date. You've been preoccupied. There's been other stuff going on. God, he was such a mess. Nope. Alright, he had to think. He used to be able to think on his feet. He could do this. So, uh... I want to deal with this medication issue first, so the rest of the day can be fun, right? Sure, whatever you want. If we get a blood test, we'll need to wait a while. I was thinking we could get the test first, then eat breakfast, then get the results. That should give us the entire rest of the day. That's such a great plan, let's hurry. John was glad to hear her respond so happily, but wondered if she would have said that no matter what he told her. I don't, I don't think so. They took a bus across town to the furthest pharmacy and ordered a standard Coitex sampling. He'd been nervous that Lizzie might react poorly to the needle, but she just smiled sweetly at him while he took a bit of her blood, then hopped back up. Look, the band-aid has little kitties on it. It's so cute. You want to eat something now, then? Yes. They walked to a nearby bakery, and he bought them a pair of pastries. One of the only advantages of his workaholic father was that at least he had a decent amount of spending money. Lizzie held hers in both hands and began cheerfully nibbling at the end of it. She stared at him while she was doing it, but otherwise she looked ordinarily cute instead of scarily cute. Nom nom nom. Nom 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 nom. <laughs> I didn't know you could act silly. Well, I mean, you guys really haven't had a lot of interaction up until at this point either, so... I don't hear you laugh very often. You usually look so sad, and that makes me sad too. And like that, his good mood crumpled. Aww. I know, I'm always ruining everything. I don't know why anyone stays near me when I j- No. Lizzie took his pastry and stuffed it in his mouth to shut him up. Aw, that's cute in its own way. You're not depressing at all, John. Just being around you makes me feel warm inside. I just want to see you smile more. When you smile, I feel like maybe everything will be all right. <laughs> his attempt to talk around the pastry made Lizzie giggle, which made him laugh, which just set off a vicious cycle. After a fit of coughing, he had lost half his pastry, but regained his good mood. 
It had been a long time since an emotional downturn had him sent him spiraling towards depression. Lizzie grinned at him, and he smiled back at her. All at once, he felt guilty for trying to convince her to take medication. Who was he to tell her what to do? Worse, was he manipulating her obsession like this? It was only to help her, but did that make it any better? The thoughts troubled him, but they remained in the back of his mind as they finished eating, talking lightly. But then they were finished, and it had been a while since the test. It was time to go back. Let's go get the results, okay? Will, will John think differently about me? No. No, I just want to find a way to help you, okay? Okay. She answered cheerfully, but something in the lightheartedness they'd shared was gone, and it wasn't coming back. Swallowing, John stuffed himself, steeled himself, whoop, steeled himself and walked back to the pharmacy. Lizzie slowed near the entrance, then shuffled backward. I'll stay here. You can bring me what I need, okay? Uh, okay, no problem. Inside, he found the pharmacist writing something on a clipboard. When he spotted John, he immediately frowned. You're alone? I suppose that's for the best, anyway. We need to talk. You know, other than that whole doctor-patient confidentiality and not sharing, you know, test results and stuff like that with anybody but the patient. This is going, okay. Is something wrong? She's not sick, is she? It isn't that kind of test. It only takes a snapshot of a person's current condition. Is your friend going through a difficult time right now? Well, I mean, maybe a little. These are some extraordinary numbers. Most people only see these briefly during the worst days of their lives. Take care of her until things pass, all right? Well, okay. There's something else I have to ask. It won't be comfortable, but it's necessary. Have you ever gotten any sense that she might hurt herself or anyone else? No, I can't imagine her doing anything like that. Don't lie! The light of was out of his mouth before he even consciously decided to lie. John regretted it immediately, yet now it was too late to contradict himself. The pharmacist grunted and looked over his papers. No, no, it's not too late to contradict yourself. You can always just be like, well, you know, actually, when I think about it, there was this one time. Well, keep a close eye on her. Even the gentlest person could be capable of violence under conditions like these. Is it... Is it really that bad? I thought she seemed better lately. No, there must be some recent trauma she hasn't told you about. I'm certain of it. I mean, someone with numbers like these regularly, they would be completely incurable. Insane, probably. And definitely a threat to society. Ooh. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to imply, imply anything. I'm sure she'll work through things and go back to normal soon. So, can you prescribe anything? I can give you two weeks of either Yandequil or Nilazine. That should get her over the rough patch. Just two weeks? Can't you prescribe more? Not without a much more extensive evaluation, but like I said, that's all you'll need. I'm sure she'll recover soon. I should really be asking her directly, but in her present condition, I think it'd be safer to bend the rules and let you act like a family member. Eh. So which one do you think would be best for her? I am going to pick Yandequel. Two weeks of Yandequel coming up. Try to help her rest, okay? Yeah, okay. That just seemed like the more beneficial one um, based on what Lizzie's displaying. Uh, the other one just kind of seemed like a, it was like a mood elevator, but I, I think that she needs something a little bit more than a mood elevator. But I'm not a doctor, and this is not a real person, so... Don't take medical advice from me. Heading outside, John handed the bag to Lizzie. He had pushed pretty hard to get to this point, but he would never force her to take the medication. His father had used to talk like he didn't have a choice about depression medication, practically threatened to force feed him. John refused to do that to anyone else. But Liddy, Lizzie didn't make an issue of it at all. Smiling at him, she opened the bag, shook out one of the pills, and swallowed it without even taking a drink. She'd given the label a careful look, though. Okay, I hope you can love me now, John. Lizzie, no, I never meant anything like that. Please don't... That didn't taste bad at all. So can we go on with our date now, John? Can we? He wanted to go back to what she had said, reassure her that he meant nothing wrong by it, but his words stuck in his mouth. Maybe on some level he did mean to force her. Maybe he was repeating everything that had been done to him. But with Lizzie smiling at him like that, he couldn't fall too far into depression. Instead, John smiled back and gestured for her to follow. Yeah, where are we going now? 
Without any great ideas, John thought they should go to the park. Their town had a pretty nice park, and it was usually empty this time of day. His friends always said their movie was the best first date, but he suspected that they mostly wanted to try a cop a feel. Besides, he was worried Lizzie would end up watching him instead of the movie. In the park, Lizzie, Lizzie happily skipped along the paths, often looking back to him, but at least looking a lot at a lot of other things. As he watched, he realized that she was definitely more stable than usual. usual. She stayed cheerful and sweet without any threats of violence. Could it really be the Yandiquil? With him, the pack sign had taken weeks to work, and whether or not it actually helped had been really unclear. Then again, Lizzie was her own case. I'm guessing it's just a case of Lizzie being happy to be out and about and hanging out with somebody that doesn't judge her and treat her like, like a crazy person or something like that. Of course, it took more than medicine to cure a serious condition. He knew that all too well. As Myth Smythe had said, the therapy was also an important component of recovery. Hers had certainly helped him a lot. The third moan component was a social support network, and there he completely failed to take her advice. He still spent most of his time alone, or in meaningless old relationships. But hey, and now he was walking in the park with a girl his age. Maybe things were looking up. And for once in his life, things went his way. Lizzie was happy to eat fast food for lunch and didn't even try to feed him anything. Afterward, he was pretty much out of plans, and Lizzie didn't want to stop. Fortunately, she was happy to drag him around town to see random things. In a way, he was grateful for that. He had spent all of his energy for making decisions during the morning. It was easy to just glide along in her week, and that way, she was a good match for him. When the sun started setting, John was actually surprised. Had the day really passed by that quickly? He could barely drag himself through a lot of weekends. This was a welcome change. Holy shit, is that John? Oh man, this was, uh, I didn't want that. That's, I would rather not deal with these guys. Classmate two with a girl. See, look at, she's already more, like, it's already gotten bad. It's not just you. I mean, other people can influence your mood. Uh, hey guys. Uh, this could get stupid dicey really quick. Is that the crazy chick you told me about? Oh, you guys are nice. You guys are just fucking class acts. Oh yeah, that's definitely her. Are you that desperate, John? You know, I'm generally a pretty controlled person, but even I would be having an outburst right now. These guys are just tools. I mean, for real, just dick holes. Given how much of a sad sack he's been lately, I'm pretty sure he is. I'm angry. John, do you, any of you have girlfriends? Uh, 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 yeah, that's what I thought. Move on. Kick rocks. Silence. Crickets. So, why don't you all just... Oh, jeez. Lizzie's getting a... Uh... You guys talk so much shit. Just leave Lizzie out of it, okay? Well, fuck you, John. If she wasn't crazy, you could never get a girl as cute as her. Oh, man. She is pretty hot. I don't get why she's with you. Um, because John doesn't talk about her like she's not there, and he's actually kind of a cool dude, and you guys are just, like, having your little bro moment. Wieners. Yeah, this really doesn't make any sense. Why doesn't you just go away? Aw, oh, John, are you gonna cry? Better not, or she'll realize how pathetic you are. Oh, boy. His positive moves was completely gone. He knew he should check to see how Lizzie was taking the mocking, but it was the most he could do not to fall into the mire of self-hatred. As always, he felt like he should be stronger than this, less emotionally fragile, and that just added to his self-hatred. If it had been anyone else, he might have crashed completely, but he knew these guys, and he was at least familiar with their attitudes. John pulled himself together and faked a smile at them. Sounds like sour grapes to me. You all have fun with each other, okay? Come on, Lizzie. Let's get out of here. They scoffed, but he didn't care. Taking her hand, he walked as fast as he dared out of the alleyway. When they were a safe distance away, he finally glanced at Lizzie and shivered. Her eyes were staring intensely at nothing, and she was gnawing on one knuckle. Was, was there blood running down her finger? Abruptly, she squeezed his hand, then both her hands behind her back and smiled at him. That was really sweet of you, John. You're always so nice. Don't let those guys bother you. They say a lot of stuff, but it doesn't mean anything. Is your finger okay? It looked like... I'm okay, John. Don't worry. Well, should we just keep going? Okay. 
But they hadn't gotten far before John realized he couldn't follow up on that. He had pulled himself together long enough to walk away, but now he had nothing left. It was all too much. He wasn't usually outside in public this much, and though being with Lizzie wasn't bad, he wasn't stable enough for this much interaction. John, are you okay? I'm, I'm tired. I think I need to go home. Is something wrong? Did I do something wrong? No, not at all. He could hear the tremor in her voice, knew she needed affirmation, but the apathy was choking him to death. He had no energy for anyone else, no energy for anything but getting back home, curling up and wishing he was dead. Somehow he said goodbye, found the bus, and got all the way back home. The events packed like, passed like he was suffocating in gauze, the world around him too unreal to have any effect. Maybe he should have reassured Lizzie, but it didn't matter. He was an idiot for thinking he could help her. Nothing he did mattered. Man, this is a struggle. On Sunday, John woke up utterly miserable. It took him several minutes just to push the sheet off his face, and then he immediately winced at the light. There was probably no way he was going to get out of bed for the entire day, not feeling like this. He had homework due on Monday, but he just didn't care. He'd get hungry eventually, but it didn't compare to the deeper emptiness gnawing at him. Everything hurt, and nothing mattered. Just when he was going to roll over and futilely attempt to go to sleep, he heard someone knocking on the door. Good morning, John. He stared at his ceiling for a while, then pulled his sheets over his face. Not today. He had no energy for anyone else. She'd have to take care of herself. Soon enough, she stopped knocking. Good. John let the blanket stay on his face, but didn't close his eyes, just staring at the fabric. That was when he heard the front door close. Under normal circumstances, he would have been upset or uncomfortable, but in the grip of depression, he barely registered what it meant. Good morning, John. He didn't respond. She didn't even seem to notice, moving closer and pulling the blankets away from his face. She's also back in her school uniform now. Are you having a bad day? Don't worry, Lizzie will take care of you. And with that, she began bustling around him, apparently not even caring that he didn't respond. She untangled his sheets and tucked him in better, humming a little tune the entire time. Stay right there, okay? I don't think John's going anywhere. She gave him a little peck on the cheek, then skipped out of the room. He heard her go across the floor, then enter the kitchen and begin opening things. Strangely, just having her present helped. The worst part of days he couldn't get out of bed was actually the boredom. He didn't want to do anything, but that left his mind grinding against itself. Now at least he had Lizzie to listen to. It sounded like she found the pots and pans pretty quickly and turned on the stove. Since his mother had left, most of them didn't, most of them didn't get that much use. John's father never cooked anything, and though John had learned to cook for himself, he usually just used the same pan every day. Was she really going to cook for him? He recalled that her lunch has been pretty good, so maybe he had something to look forward to. Lizzie popped in again to open his window and let fresh air in. He was afraid that she would try to talk to him, but she just smiled when he looked at her and kept moving around. Soon she headed back out, still humming to herself. Eventually she returned with a steaming bowl of soup. John stared at it, so she sat it down on the bed and held out a spoon for him. Eat up. You need strength. It looked like she was going to hold the spoon in front of him until he ate it, so John gave in and accepted the spoonful. Even through his gray haze, it wasn't bad. He opened his mouth when she fed him another spoon. After he ate the soup, she left him alone again for a while, and he actually drifted to sleep. It was heavy, exhausted sleep, but it was better than nothing. When he woke up, Lizzie was sitting nearby, staring at him with a dead look in her eyes, but John found that he didn't even care. She spent the entire, entire day caring for him, always fussing around for his comfort and feeding him regardless of his objections. Somehow, she managed to convince him to sit up. <coughs> Sorry. Propped against some pillows, he was once sitting up, it was easier for him to do something else, like read for a while. To his surprise, Lizzie actually pulled out some homework and began working through it, humming to herself. He wasn't sure why he was surprised, obviously she was a student too, but somehow he didn't think people like her actually worked or studied. By the end of the day, he was actually feeling close to better, but when he tried to get up, Lizzie kept him down with a gentle hand on his chest. You get better, okay? I'll see you on Monday. She stayed with him until he finally went to sleep for the night. It was only as he drifted off peacefully that he realized that he had definitely locked the door the night before. Eh. Lizzie seems pretty determined. On 
Tuesday, John and Lizzie ate lunch together as if everything was normal, and in some bizarre way, it really was. Perhaps due to the medication, she seemed so much more stable than before. She was sweet and kind at all times, always considerate and affectionate. If there was the occasional moment where she still seemed a little obsessed, the slightest positive comment from him would be interpreted as a sign of their destined love. But all in all, John was happier than he had been in a long time. His classmates even stopped messing with him about Lizzie, though he wasn't sure if that was because she seemed normal or because they were afraid of her. Yet he wasn't, not really. He had a hard time believing that anyone could really love him, yet it seemed like Lizzie truly did. If anything, he worried that he could never love her back that intensely. He had an appointment scheduled with Miss Smythe on Wednesday, yet for once when he walked into her office, he didn't feel like he desperately needed it. Ready for your session today, John? Actually, I'm feeling really good. Maybe we should skip today's. You should know better than that. If you stop the treatment that's making you feel better, you might have another relapse. No, you're right. Sorry. Don't be sorry. Just lie down and take a load off. So how have you been doing lately? Well, I'm okay, I guess. That's better than most weeks, so it looks like you're making progress. By the way, I've seen you pass with a girl. Are you two dating? Uh... I think you can say yes. Oh, I get to pick! I... Okay. Now I'm overanalyzing the situation. Um, yes, we're dating. Maybe something like that. No, we're just friends. No, she's sort of stalking me. It's complicated. I would... It's not complicated. I don't want to say she's stalking me because that puts out a whole other side of the situation. I don't think it's... I'm being terrible today. I don't think it's just friends. So I'd go between yes, we're dating or maybe something like that. Um... So I am going to give myself a little bit of room to decide what my choice is going to be. And I'm going to end this episode here. And then I will pick it up again. And when I come back to it, I will give you all an answer. And I will give Miss Smythe an answer too. So um, that's it for now. Sorry. I just This game is not exactly designed to... I think it's, you know, more for one playthrough, but I'm breaking it up into littler pieces. So, yeah, I kind of have to just to stop it where things give you choices or get a little interesting. And I'm sorry about that, but like I said, I'll just play it, I'll just pick it up again right after this and that way you guys don't have to wait very long to know what I choose. So, with that, I want to thank you all for coming back to One Room Over Gaming, and until next time, you guys know where you can find me. I'll always just be One Room Over. So, I will see you all very soon, and until then, Happy gaming, take care of yourselves and each other, and it won't be long. Alright, you guys take care. See ya.